G'day, my name's Gordon Deadman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. Today we're going to have a look at what I pack in a 24 hour day pack as well as what I use and pack in a multi-day hiking pack. No matter how long I'm going out into the woods, there's a minimum amount of equipment that I always have with me, be it just a few hours or a couple of days. And all of that equipment is what I like to call my 24 hour day pack and it is the base for my multi-day pack. All of my day hiking equipment, be it just for a few hours, fits inside a small case which I can then take any, anywhere. And the reason for that being is that I'm always going to be prepared for an unexpected night out. And really it should be the minimum amount of equipment that anyone should take with them no matter what the uh, duration of the journey. And then you're pretty much set and prepared for anything that nature may throw at you. So let's have a look at some of those items. Firstly, the items that are carried on the man, so on my person, are my knife. Okay, a fixed blade knife, which in this case is my Mora Garberg. I have my Bucko Laplander saw, which is always on my person. In my pocket attached to a lanyard is my ferro rod, my ferrocerium rod, so I can make fire when I need to. Also attached to my belt, I have a Leather Leatherman multi-tool, which has a number of, uh, this is a Leatherman super tool, which has a number of smaller tools, saws, uh, files, etc. And of course the meat and potatoes of any multi-tool are the pliers to, um, for many, many other purposes, particularly if you are out with any sort of uh, mechanical device. So that's on my belt. In my pocket, I always have a f small first aid kit and some cordage, in this case, some 550 parachute cord, which is always in my pocket. All those items should be on the man. So that way, if I don't have my pack, these items are with me and on my person. Moving away from that, from those first essential items, and we've actually talked about this in the 10 and 12 piece kit in a previous episode. Apart from these items on my person, the other items that I would have are a metal container, which gives me the ability to boil water. Boiling water is by far the, the best way of making water safe to drink. It gets rid of 99% of all waterborne pathogens. And I also have a metal cooking cup at the bottom of this. Now I have a few different versions of this. This is just my small scouting one. This is a clean canteen, 20 ounce uh, stainless steel single ward bottle. And this is an MSR titanium metal cup. So with this, this gives me the ability to boil water. As far as my shelter's situation is concerned, I have a reusable space blanket, the uh, aluminized mylar blanket, which is fantastic. This can be used as a shelter. It can be used as a, 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 a cold weather blanket, as, as far as it, it insulates and, and reflects up to 70% up to of your body heat back to you. Um, so it's a shelter, it's a ground sheet, it's a moisture barrier, it's a blanket. It's, it's, it's very, very useful, very, very multi-purpose. So this is my go-to emergency shelter. Very, very, really, really versatile. On top of that, I have a 55 gallon drum liner or garbage bag, which once again can be utilized for a great number of purposes. This can be cut up into a shelter using a particular knot, using sheet bends, and we've done a, an episode on, on how we do that. We can carry water in it. It can be used as a rain jacket. It's also a moisture barrier. Uh, we can hot rock boil in it. The uses of a garbage bag are pretty much only limited by your imagination. A fantastic piece of kit. So that is another thing that's always in my, 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 uh, my kit. That can also be carried in my pocket so and it weighs nothing. Now over here we have my possibles, possibles pouch and in my possibles pouch 
I have a number of important items. I'll just get them out one by one. I have a re, a, once again, a, a, an emergency space blanket, which is the, the Bivy style, which is a sole emergency space blanket, which could be used for me or someone else that I'm with that I need to give emergency care for to keep them warm, particularly in a, say, a hypothermic situation. I have some, some duct tape or cloth tape, which is great for repairs. A whole number of things I can use duct tape for, or cloth tape repairs. Uh, fixing things, waterproofing, many, many uses for um, cloth tape. I have a head torch, um, very, very important. This is a LED, a LED Lenser MH4, very good torch. It's, it's USB rechargeable. They last for about 30 hours. It really, really, I was uh, changed over the LED lenses a couple of years ago and they're fantastic torches, they really are. They also take normal batteries. Um, very bright, there's some mirrors in it, they're German made and very, very durable and really good quality and the light they produce really is top shelf. There's many, many different versions of, that they have out there on the market. I have a DC4 uh, diamond and ceramic sharpening stone so I can actually sharpen my, my knife in the field. I have a couple of bandanas and this happens to be the new um, Bushcraft Survival Australia bandana with all the uses we have on it and that's just recently come out 100% cotton 100% Australian made and it's um, the number of uses as I said there's so many things you can use a bandana for so really important piece of kit I have two Always, for we have a couple of different designs. Here's one with Australian native and uh, introduced animal tracks. So I use this one as my washcloth. But once again, 100% cotton, multiple uses for a bandana. I have some extra cordage, parachute cord, plus some uh, mariner's bank line, which is also three-ply, can be broken down into smaller fibres for multiple uses. I have a small silver sighting compass, which is sort of my emergency standby compass. I'll put that over there. I also have some extra tape which is taken off one of these rolls and put onto a smaller roll just to make it more portable. So all of that stuff is in my, in my possible pouch and lives in this pouch. On top of that, I have my regular sighting compass, which um, I usually have around my neck on my person. A sighting uh, compass, this is a, a Sun 2 global compass. Other than that, I use a Silver Ranger, the mirror, can let, you, let it be used as a signalling device, a heliograph, as well as first aid for seeing hard to see areas, ticks and things like that, of which out in the Aussie bush there are many. Have a whistle, very loud stadium whistle, as well as some pacing, bees, pacing beads for uh, navigation and being able to um, keep track of my distance. Over here, I have my a more robust first aid kit. And in this I have some water purification tablets, tweezers, uh, tampons for fire lighting, uh, cotton, potassium permanganate for a multitude of different things. Some um, analgesics, band-aids, there's a whole stack of needles, a whole stack of different things in here for first aid um, items, as well as a small bottle of 2% uh, tincture of iodine. Also with that, I carry an Israeli bandage for, um, for any sort of nasty cuts or um, open wounds that will really take care of it. Over here, uh, a dry bag. Dry bag, great piece of kit. This allows me to A, waterproof my, um, my pack and the contents in it. 
It can be used to carry water or to actually, um, once you've purified water using either boiling or whatever system you're using, it enables me to store that water once it's cooled. So, and it also acts as a flotation aid, so once it's filled with air. So once again, multi-purpose, as all these items are, they all should have at least three uses. I have uh, my wet weather gear, have, always have some wet weather gear. In this case, it's a Helicon Tex poncho. So this also doubles as a shelter. So I can either, either wear that, I'm actually wearing uh, my uh, Swazi, Swazi anorak at the moment against the wet weather, but I always, um, it can get a bit warm in the summer months though, so something like this is a, it's a bit, it's not as hot, but it uh, keeps the rain off as well as so I can make a shelter out of it as well. Multiple uses for a poncho. Over here, in this little sack, I always have some spare warm clothing. I have a head covering because we lose 70% of our body heat through our head and our neck through radiation. So we need to keep that heat in. And even in Australia, the temperatures can be very hot in central Australia during the day and other parts and, and very, very cold at night. So you need to keep that heat in of a night time. So that's a wool beanie. I have a wool pair of socks, a spare pair of wool socks, as well as a a light wool pullover, once again, to keep my body cool. This is a Fial Raven uh, long sleeve woolen t-shirt. Very, very warm, very, very comfortable. And it folds up to nothing. In fact, all those three items fold up to nothing. Very light and pack away. And on top of that, I have my note bag and journal, which in this case is just to write in the rain tactical notepad so I can journal and take notes, um, plant identification, all sorts of things when out, I'm, I'm out bush. So all these items are, what are, um, are essential items to have with you when you venture out into the bush. That way if you had to spend an unprepared night out in the bush, for someone that knows what they're doing and has some skill and the right equipment, it might be any more than inconvenient camping. But it's very, very important particularly to have some warm clothing with you because if you do find yourself caught out and a lot of people with a lot of fatalities that have happened in Australia, uh, A, due to people not telling someone where, they've, where they're going or when they'll be back or a game planned if they're not, they don't have essential equipment with them, particularly things that are going to keep them warm. They don't have the means to light a fire or know how to. They don't have something to keep, keep them out of the weather, but they don't have warm clothing. And the number one reason that people do perish out in the wilderness is they lose their body heat through con conduction to the cold ground or wet clothing because they're wearing the wrong clothing and they end up one of the a statistic because they went out ill prepared thinking that uh, she'll be right, I'm only going to go for a couple of hours. It's more common than what you think. So it's just a, a suggestion of some items that you should, should have with you and I never leave when I'm going out for any sort of trip, that's my base, base layer. And that serves as my base for my multi-day hiking kit. And we're going to have a look at what the items in that are next. So we've just had a look at all the items that I include in my 24 hour day pack or a 48 hour day pack. When I'm going into the wilderness or into the bush for a, a number of days, a week and beyond, I will take uh, a, a much larger pack that I can have some of the items that you see before you inside. Now, some of the concepts that I'm talking about now um, are concepts that I've used in the Army for my Army experience and what we use in Law Force, as well as, as a lot of ideas I've taken from studying with people like Paul Kirtley from the UK. And I put these all together and it's a system that works really well. Now, the subject of bushcraft is about knowledge and skills, not equipment. And on our courses, we teach people how to do away with a lot of the equipment and how to find the answers in nature. But when I am going on a, a hike and I'm not making natural shelters and, and friction fire and all of those natural skills, which of course are the heart of bushcraft, these are some of the items that I take. So firstly, 
um, down the bottom of my pack, and I'll show you how I pack all this into my kit. I have my day pack, and that's with me all the time. That is going to be my base, my base for everything. And I keep that in a separate pack, so I can literally take that straight out, and it's good to go. So once I reach my base camp, I have my day pack ready to go. I can take all the items out there and pack them separately because the pack, which in this case is a Fial Raven Cancan pack, can um, can be packed down flat and it's a great works as a great divider. So a brilliant piece of um, uh, those uh, panel loading packs because they fold up flat and you can open up. So that's a self-contained unit, but that is my base. Beyond that uh, 24 hour kit, we. I would add a sleeping bag, in this case this is a um, snug pack Softy 3 Merlin, rated down to about plus 5, when it's colder I'll usually do, use a Softy 6, and um, they pack up quite small, to that I would add a, um, one of the Cedar Summit thermal, thermal reactors, and it's just it's, it's a sleeping bag liner which A keeps the sleeping bag clean, as well as um, it adds about five to eight degrees. So I can turn a uh, sleeping bag, which is say plus, um, plus five degrees Celsius, make it comfortable down to, um, you know, below freezing. Really versatile, and I can use it in the summer. And I actually use this when I'm away with North Force and the Army quite often in the summer weight light um, sleeping bags that we use in the military. So it works really well. I use that for a number of things. I, um, to put my sleeping bag in, I use a bivy bag, this is a snug pack special forces bivy, I use a larger one um, when I'm doing stuff with the army, but this is very very light, breathable, excellent piece of kit and it, it's, um, it gives you an extra layer of warmth for your sleeping bag as well as protecting it and keeping the wind out at some um, another and, and the rain out, so it's a brilliant piece of kit. Inside of which I put a this is a Snug Pack Multi Mac. Now, I'm not snug, sponsored by Snug Pack or anything, I just use a lot of their equipment. They have some great stuff. This is a three quarter mattress. You don't need any, um, this is a blow up Snug Pack three quarter um, multi mat. You don't need anything larger than that. The only time you need a full um, body sleeping mat is below minus 10. You just need to get the top of your neck and below your bum, and that's all you really need for Australia. There's no need to have anything bigger than that. It just takes up extra room, is unnecessary. So those three work together really well. The, the multi mat goes inside my bivy, and then my bivy and my sleeping bag liner are uh, all within that. So that's my what I'm what I'm sleeping in. Um, to, to that I'll add a mosquito net, this is an army style box mosquito net, excellent when I'm in Darwin, absolute necessity with the mosquitoes, you will not sleep if you don't have a box style mosquito net, excellent piece of kit. Here I have my toiletry kit which is inside a, a dry bag, I have a Shemag which is um, it's a Helicon Tech Shemag or I use a, a, one of the army ones when I'm, I'm away with the army. I have a different kit, a different pack that I use, an Alice pack, and a different configuration for that. This is just, this is my towel and um, that I use to keep myself dry and clean when I'm out bush. Inside that, I have my toiletry kit. If I open that up, inside that I've got some lip chafe, a small, um, Victorian Ox uh, tool, some scissors, a file, some tweezers, etc. A toothpick, a little mini knife. Um, now, I've got some deodorant in here. I don't use that when necessary. I'm out in the bush, but when I'm outdoor guiding in Kakadu, professionally, when I've got clients, I will take that so that I'm obviously smelling nice for clients, but my own in the bush, that's obviously a luxury and it's unnecessary. Uh, tooth, toothbrush and toothpaste. All fits in this beautiful little kit, excellent little kit. Some soap, I prefer solid uh, cakes of soap. I'm not really a fan of liquid soap, but sometimes it's hard to pack. Hand sanitizer these days, be COVID safe. You can't not have enough of the uh, sanitizer, but out in bush, but sanitizer is standard bush practice for, for hygiene. So that's nothing new there at all. And some moisturizer. 
all that fits neatly into this small little pack. And that will do me for literally, you know, I'll go bush for a couple of weeks with that and that's fine. So that fits inside this dry bag, also inside the dry bag. I've got some Cedar Summit Wilderness Wash, which is great for uh, salt water and fresh water. And that sort of lets me wash up, it lets me wash my clothes, whole stack of things, really um, a, great, uh, a great addition. And it's biodegradable as well. So that's my, um, my cleanliness kit or hygiene kit. Here I have a um, survival supplies snake bite bandage kit. So when I'm out in the bush, in the Aussie bush, we have a lot of dangerous snakes in Australia. This is a really, really good kit. And we have a, we've had a look at this kit in uh, one of our earlier uh, episodes with uh, Chris Purbitt and we looked at uh, snake bite um, first aid in Australia. So that's always with me when I'm out in the Aussie bush. Now the technology side of it, and for those that know me, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a technophobe, but when I'm out bush for a while, um, in order to, say, recharge my LED Lenser torches, this is a LED Lenser ML4, which is a mini lantern, great piece of kit, particularly around camp. It has a, a red filter and I use that often. And to keep all that stuff powered, including my, my, um, my iPhone when I'm out in bush, um, when I get back in the land, I have I use the uh, Power Traveller Tactical, which is a great way, and this is a solar charge, and that'll actually keep my stuff powered for um, uh, for days on end. And I've actually used this in the military world. It's robust. It's really tough, and it's it's a fantastic way of keeping everything um, charged up. And I can almost go as long as I've got sunlight. I can be out there indefinitely with those things to keep everything charged up and working. Here I've got a, a large dry bag and that fits inside my pack and that keeps all of this stuff dry and I'll show you how that works when we put all this back in the pack. My clothes when I'm going out for a week and beyond are uh, all contained in a waterproof another dry bag. This is the Helicon Text. Um, dry bag. Once again, another dry. I've always got a few dry bags. You can't really have enough of them. I have a t-shirt. I've got some spare underpants. I've got to, I have, I roll all my stuff up and I do this as a, a military thing. It's great. And it just enables, it to, uh, enables things to be packed up very, very small. I have a spare long sleeve shirt. I have a spare pair of pants, a couple of pairs of underpants and a couple of pairs of socks, as well as one extra fleece for um, if it gets particularly cold. That's a, that's a lightweight fleece, that one. To that, if I'm in a cold climate, I'll add some thermals, so a pair of thermal pants, so the um, icebreaker um, or in a top um, to supplement that. It depends on where I am, so that I can chop and change. But for the climate we're in at the moment, that's, that's, that's all I need, because it's um, coming, it's, um, spring coming into summer. So that's the uh, clothing and I'll have that for a week. Beyond that I need to start washing clothes particularly beyond a few days and we'll talk about that in a minute. I have an extra warm layer here. This is a Fial Raven granite um, woolen bush shirt fantastic around the fire, keeps you warm and of course wool is great because it retains a lot of its um, inchily value when it's wet. Great around fires as well so I always keep that in the top of my pack. Even when it is in, in warm weather it can get pretty chilly at night sometimes but I find with one of those I'm pretty good so that always comes with me. Now in really wet weather I will also take a, a more substantial um, say wet and cold weather, I'll take a more substantial garment. This is the uh, Swazi Enerac. Great pieces of which I just had on earlier because it's raining. Great piece of kit, great around the bush. It doesn't, it doesn't rip when you're around uh, the bush, made for the bush. Does get a bit warm when, it, when it's not too cold, but is 100% waterproof, really bomb-proof piece of kit. If 
it is a bit if it's not that cold i'll wear i'll, I'll just use a poncho when it's more light light way and it's warm because that will be a bit too warm in in in, in warm weather okay from over this side there's my shelter this is a helicon text uh, tarp just like a, you know same design as australian australian um, army hoochie which of course i use in the army all the time this is just a more lightweight version still is it's about the same size but it just packs up a bit smaller a lot lighter fantastic piece of kit if i want a larger tarp um, say a three by three i'll use an out and out and goods um, lightweight trail tarp still nylon tarp for a big one they're fantastic helicontex also does a much larger tarp so chopping and changing with clients i might decide to have a bigger shelter so it depends what the situation is um, but for lightweight stuff i'll have something nice and small like that some extra cordage to go with it, some parachute cord in case I need an extension. Also, as a ridge line to hang my equipment under my tarp. An extra roll of um, number 36 Mariner's bank line, three ply bank line. I don't always use it, especially if I've got a bivy bag, there's no need. I've got a ground sheet. Ground sheet is great just for keeping keeping your stuff organized as a moisture barrier it just gives you and particularly if you're out in the bush for a while you like to be comfortable weighs nothing just a, a nylon uh, ground sheet just to um, give you a nice working area and sleeping area this is my toilet kit in another episode we've looked at proper toilet etiquette and very important that when you go to the bush um, that you look after your hygiene properly um, I've got toilet paper in there, some hand sanitizer, a cigarette lighter and some matches. Very important that you responsibly and safely burn your toilet paper because this stuff is ghastly stuff and will last for two to three years and it's a major problem with litter bugs in Australia doing it. On all our courses we teach proper latrine. Um, use how to use a latrine how to dispose of your toilet paper and, and look after yourself in the bush how to leave no trace and be responsible for the environment very very important so that's in my uh, toilet kit and of course if you can't um, take care of your toilet paper burn it responsibly you have a plastic i've got a plastic bag in there so you take it with you you don't uh, litter the environment very uh, we must practice good environmental stewardship this is just an extra pocket it's actually a pocket off an old army uniform of mine and these are just great i use that as a tinder bag for, for collecting tinder and different things like that it's um yeah fantastic just for um, various things i always um have a couple of those with me as well um, in one of my side pouches so those those items that i just looked at they go in the top of my pack and of course that's the, the my um tarp was the first thing that comes out and then i can put up my tarp and everything can be taken out under that they're all in the top pouch this next one is in one of my side pouches this um, is my food portion and when i'm going out in the bush say for, for a week i can actually easily keep a week's worth of food so in this pouch we've had a look at this before in another episode is my brew kit of which i've got some powdered milk some tea some honey and of course some yorkshire tea which is one of my favorites to, to have out in the bush so that's my brew kit that goes with me everywhere in this bag i've um in another episode um we've looked at how to make a 24-hour ration pack and i usually have three or four of these um, which will easily last me a week these are based on the military style ration packs we use um, using food bought from your local supermarket and a lot healthier i might add so four of those will keep me going for a week easily and of course i'll supplement with food with um, some wild edibles in the area i am so depending on what i'm doing of course you always supplement where possible um, also there i've got some tins of um, some sundry items that you would take and once again we also looked at these in a uh, in in that same episode where i've got some whole whole flour so now i can make damper and things like that these are all in sealable tins we've got some uh, coconut flour 
Then another one I've got some rice and I've got some extra powdered milk because I like a good cup of tea. So these are brilliant because they're bomb proof, they last for a long time and I can create many, many foods from that. And of course, I can also supplement by adding food from the wild to these. So that's my food component. They all fit in one of the side pouches. Now, I don't always take this, but say if I've got someone else with me, I might take an extra food kit and these Wildo um, Swedish um, little pack away uh, plates and sets um, and cups of cups are fantastic. So when you do want a little bit of luxury, those things are fantastic. They've got their own sporks, great, and they pack up to nothing. And I'll often put spices and things like inside this um, little case. I don't always take, take, take something like that. I don't really need to because I've got my um, cups canteen and things and I don't really need to. But as I said, all this fits in quite easily. So all of this goes in one pouch, a week's worth of food in one of my side pouches. Okay, so the following items fit inside my last uh, PLC or personal load carrying side pocket. And inside the last side pocket is my uh, clean canteen 40 ounce uh, cooking, bot um, cooking bottle, or say water bottle, single wall, inside a Snow Peak uh, titanium mini solo cook set. And I use that all around the world. Great piece of this, couple little pots under there, really good piece of kit, and we've seen that in another episode. So that all fits in there, as well as I have a, a metal spork in there and one of the Pathfinder uh, pot hangers. Great piece of kit. I just keep it contained in there because it keeps it organized. Um, so it fits in the pouch. Well, I'm thinking it just keeps everything contained in its own little package. To that, I'll, I have a MSR four litre dromedary bag, and that enables me to, I want some purified water to fill this uh, up, and I've got an extra water source there, and when they're empty, they store fat. Great way of storing extra water. In hot weather, Cedar Summit, I've got a little mini shower. Works great, particularly when I'm out field for two or three weeks to have a little shower. Really great little piece of kit, folds down to nothing. That's a Cedar Summit pocket shower. Now, for more substantial cooking, when I'm, when I'm hiking and I'm sort of out in the bush for a while, I use a, a Zebra fold-up saucepan. It's like a 14-ounce saucepan, inside which I've got my Billbank bag, which I use for um, course filtration for all my water needs, and I have a collapsible bowl. This collapsible bowl allows me to wash up, allows me to wash my clothes um, as a water source as well as collecting water when it's raining. It's um, quite multi-purpose, this little fold-up collapsible bowl. So once again, it's a uh, yeah, very simple piece of kit and it all folds up inside the uh, Zebra 14 ounce uh, fold-up saucepan. I keep that inside this uh, bag just to stop soot getting on everything. Great idea of uh, Paul's, uh, Paul Kirtley got that and it really keeps your gear clean because they always get soot over it. Very simple idea but it's fantastic. So that's there and on top of that I'll have a Alton Goods titanium grill and I've used this in many many episodes and I, that comes around the world with me. Nice, very nice addition to, um, to, to your, uh, enable you to cook more um, elaborate meals. And lastly, uh, just an extra water bottle. Um, particularly in, a, in hot weather, um, if I'm going on a big hike in the military, I have a completely different system where I'm carrying up to eight to 10 litres on my person, depending where I am, particularly up north in Northern Australia. But if I can access water, I don't need to take as much. I always have a pair of gloves with me as well and just for getting things off the fire. It's a nice piece of kit. I don't need them, but it's a nice, nice to have. 
I don't always sleep on the ground, particularly up in, up in the hot tropics up around Darwin. Sometimes, you know, I don't want to be on the ground and there's lots of crawlies and nasties in a jungle environment. And in those um, situations, I prefer to sleep in a hammock. Now, I'm not a big fan of hammocks, but um, when I do want to sleep in the hammock, I'll choose one of that. This happens to be an Alton Goods hammock. They make really good hammocks and um, a great piece of kit. I'm not a hammock fan, but there are some times when I prefer that. This, um, I also, when I'm around water, I always take, pack a fishing kit in there, and we've had a look at this in another um, episode. This uh, small bushcraft pack is also a Helicon Tex bushcraft pack, and sometimes I'll, I'll use that in, instead of the uh, Fial Raven Cancan as well. So that's why that's up here. But these are optional things, not part of my regular kit. It just depends. I'll chop and choose as I need. So there's a look at the items that I have both in my day, my uh, 24 hour to 48 hour day pack, as well as what I take in a multi-day hike or a trip in the bush for a week, up to a week and beyond a week. And sometimes these items change and I'll supplement with things, but that's, a, that's an idea. The 24 hour pack is the base for them all. So what I'm going to do, they all fit inside this pack. So now I'm going to show you how they all go back into that pack. Well, there's a look at what I carry in my 24 hour to 48 hour day pack, as well as what I pack in my multi-day hiking pack when I'm going for a week or longer. If you'd like to see a list of the contents of what, uh, what we had a look at today, um, go to the website, check out the blog page, and there was an article on what I pack in my 24 hour um, day pack, as well as my multi-day hiking pack, and you get a full list of what those items are. Incidentally, this pack is probably around about 18 kilos um, when I've got some, um, when it's fully laden with water, depending on how much I'm carrying in food, it'd be a two or three kilos extra. I'm used to carrying that sort of weight with the army, it's really no problem. So physical fitness does come into it when you are hiking, etc. Once again, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Bushcraft Survival. I really appreciate you um, tuning in. Please hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to come and do one of our courses, please check out the website at www.bushcraftsurvivalaustralia.com.au and check out some of the courses we have to offer. My name's Gordon Dedman. Thanks for watching.